like to call to order a special meeting of the Oak Ridge Board of Education. Uh, let me thank uh, Mayor Gooch for being here and council members uh, Jim Dotson, Vice Mayor Rick Chen, uh, Councilman Derek Hammond, Councilwoman Ellen Smith, and Councilman Kelly Callison. We've almost got 100% today. Thank you all for being here. I know you have a busy evening ahead of you, so we appreciate it. And we have one item uh, tonight, and that's a uh, budget presentation from the superintendent. So, Dr. Borchers, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we'll go through uh, numerous slides here this evening, but give you the broad overview of where we're headed uh, prior to next Monday's uh, first reading or, or our fir yeah, first reading of our budget. I always like to start off with just focusing on the education piece of this because that's what we do. That's, that's our main uh, mission here in the Oak Ridge Schools. And as we all know, we have moved from the seven keys to college and career readiness and, and uh, did some excellent work in that uh, area, getting that 2019 award from TSBA for that work. Very excited about that. But at about that same time, we knew Oak Ridge 2020 was going to be sunsetting and we, and we had kind of run the course for the seven keys by itself. So we then took the seven keys, Oak Ridge 2020, and we now are working on what we're calling the Oak Ridge Schools uh, Portrait of a Graduate. Uh, you all have been brought up to speed on that. We're very excited about that. Uh, again, just as a high level reminder, we still have that strong focus on college career readiness indicators. You see the seven keys are still in there. We're still looking at that data, but very excited about the second uh, item there, the life ready success indicators. We hear all the time from employers the uh, social and emotional skills our students need to be successful. So we're very happy to be focusing uh, pre-K-12 on self-awareness, self-discipline, and empathy. And here is our symbol for that portrait. And to drill down a little bit more into the five uh, buckets, if you will, we have the college and career ready uh, area, the four C's, uh, big focus on the career uh, exploration, uh, what it means to be a digital citizen, and then again, the SEL, uh, attributes in our life ready bucket and that is our focus as we're going forward and our, our goal setting will be based on this and you'll see a lot of things that are uh, added to the budget tonight that directly impact uh, this strategic plan so I'm going to go ahead and uh, hand this off to Miss Van Dyke uh, to go through some of the budget issues and then we'll end with Mr. Thacker with some of the facility upgrades all right so as Dr. Borcher said you know, the goal of our budget process is really to try to support our students. Um, we're going to look back a little bit on kind of where we've come from. Um, the last well, FY20, FY21, um, definitely we had to take into consideration COVID-19. <clears throat> we had reduced budget requests, um, but we started receiving a lot of funds, um, especially from grant funding um, and a hold harmless from the state during FY21. Let's see if we can get it to go. Um, so this year, we've had unprecedented grant funding, which has really allowed the school district to do some, um, just some really cool things within different programs. Um, we've had some increased revenues that we weren't expecting, um, but we're also starting to see some rising materials and food and fuel costs that we're having to plan for looking into next year. So FY23, we've got, um, we're having a plan for some increased enrollment, adding new teacher positions. Also, as I said, um, planning for some increased cost and um, looking forward to FY24, we're looking at um, TISA replacing the BEP. Of course, we think that's gonna be really good for us, but we're not really sure yet what that's gonna look like totally until we get to this point next year. <clears throat> so overall, our budget goals, um, it boils down to focusing on finding the best possible alignment of resources um, compared to student successes. Um, our budget development process started back in November, and um, that's kind of led us to this point. The overall proposed budget for all funds for next year is $78 million. 83% of that is accounted for in our general fund. There it goes. So revenues um, in, include an enrollment increase of 131 students in Anderson County. 
Um, surprisingly, what we, the numbers we got for the state did not have any increase in Rowan County students. Um, we are, based on our first estimate, our BEP um, has um, an increase of $888,000, which is 3.6% over our FY2, FY22 funding. And of course, um, continued support from the city. Overall, the general fund increase, um, budget increase of 5.19% over our current year's amended budget. You'll notice there's a federal funds decrease of 40%, which seems really high, but again, we've had unprecedented funds and federal funds coming in and grants that were one-time grants that will be expiring, a lot of them at the end of FY23. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're looking at a 3.6% BEP increase based on the numbers that they gave us um, a couple of weeks ago. This slide is actually in the budget document. It's a year-to-year -year comparison between FY22 and FY23 and our major categories of spending. Um, that document has been posted to our website now, so if you want to look a little closer at this, um, it is on the website now. So major, major expenditure um, highlights basically for this year is that all of our employees that are eligible will receive a step increase this year. Um, all employees, all staff will receive a 4% salary increase for FY23. Um, again, supplies and services based on the current budget with projections for inflationary increases. Um, no increase in employee benefit rates for vision, dental, or life insurance, um, but the state has said that we will have a health insurance increase starting in January. Um, the retirement benefit rates are based on state rates and have gone down this year, but those fluctuate from year to year again, and that's dictated by the state. Um, overall, um, device refresh for grades two through four, and then continued ESCO payments um, for the energy savings that's been going on in all the schools. As I mentioned, a step increase for all eligible employees plus a 4% increase is what we're proposing um, for our employee compensation plan for next year. To the left here, you'll see just a, um, an overview of what we've done over the past five years in our salary increases. And to the right is um, some information on how much the step increase breaks down to for all of our um, uh, employee categories. This year, we're also um, adding in bereavement leave of two days. I don't. And our proposed staffing changes include, as I mentioned earlier, some um, additional teachers based on enrollment at different schools. Um, we do have a contingency for three additional teaching positions based on enrollment should um, a school need additional teachers that we don't know of right now. Um, most of it is being funded out of general fund um, with some, a couple of positions being funded out of federal funds as well. Um, Overall, the cost for the step and the salary increase is going to be 1.47 million. Of that, 431,000 is what the state is giving us is their 4% increase. So 30%, um, the state is basically coming in state funding. The other 70 is paid for from local funds. Um, to balance the FY23 budget, we do have a deficit, so we will be um, using some of our fund balance. Um, our deficit is $2.5 million. Um, undesignated fund balance will pick up $2.4 million of that, and then the remainder is the final amount of money that we had set aside to help pay for bus leases um, a few years back. Um, and then uh, this is just fund balance recommendations. 10% is what GFOA recommends that we keep from, for cash flow. And we're projecting that at the end of FY23, we'll be down to 11.83%. This is um, just a chart that kind of shows you how our fund balance fluctuates from month to month um, because our revenue streams do fluctuate as well. And that's what we're looking at for next year. And 
this is really just stressing the, the importance of us keeping a healthy fund balance. We do have two months of the year that we don't receive BEP funding, and then those months we have to use our fund balance in order to make sure we make payroll <laughs> and pay our other bills. And that is the end of mine. I'll pass it off to Alan. Before you do that, could I just, uh, just a quick question? And sure. actually, this might be a Matt question. Are we pretty clear on our retirements now for staff? I mean, there might be a surprise, but we're pretty set on the number of staff members that are going to retire. Yes, we are. Considering that's one of our biggest expenses and can make a difference right there. So, sorry, Alan. That's all right. Well, this year uh, is uh, as strange as it seems, uh, we did start this year with COVID, and uh, that required a lot of response actions. And as you can see on the screen, there's quite a few of them that we touched on. We also facilitated work with the grant funding that was uh, provided to us. And our, our goal was to limit the impact of COVID on our schools and learning environments. But it did both have an operational and financial impact on the district. The uh, capital projects uh, that were available to us this year, we continued working with ESG. Um, and the school district has continued our partnership with City of Oak Ridge uh, with a cooperative approach toward improving facilities such as Ben Martin Track, the baseball field, uh, Blankenship field, and uh, other areas. Uh, we're also uh, continuing the work with the roofing project that was started with the city and uh, that has continued to improve both the quality of city and school facilities. Um, and we're utilizing the facility study and the capacity study for all district buildings to adjust our recommendations for district's capital future plans. Um, we'll be following the enrollment changes closely and how that will impact facility needs in the near future. Uh, the CIP historical investment, as you can see over years, it was, uh, Pretty, pretty well funded in the early years, but then we've had a, a, a time that was a little bit lower, but now we're starting to have a leveling off of that, and that's uh, helped us, along with the ESG project, uh, have a good, solid effect on our schools and the facilities. Some future possibilities for CIP funding that we've discussed uh, with uh, council uh, is a new SAB building. Uh, new school or additions to current schools to handle their population growth within the city, renovations and upgrades to district athletic venues, remodeling of current facilities or new expanding instructional programs, and scheduled replacement of district HVAC equipment at or beyond its useful life, and, and also looking at improvements to district ADA access, parking lots, and driveways. Uh, just a quick roofing update. The city and the school did that roof evaluation by Roof Connect in 2018, and we've been working with that schedule. Since then, we've completed roofs at Robertsville, Willowbrook. Uh, Glenwood is 95% complete. Secret City Academy uh, is in progress. The lower performing arch roof is, is uh, probably at 90% complete, and they're just getting started on the east end of the Comprehensive Studies building. So those roofs are all had significant impact. And then uh, a big piece for us is the city's contribution for the track that's helped us to be able to fund rebuilding of the track. And here you can see a picture. This was taken actually this weekend. Uh, so there's a lot of work that's been going on. Uh, there's a lot of uh, structural work that's underground that you don't see that's been completed and it is moving very quickly um, on this site almost daily looking at changes and working with the contractors um, the city allocated 300,000 last year and all of that funding was allocated toward this project a little update on ESG uh, phase two will be complete this summer uh, significant upgrades to HVAC, lighting, indoor air quality, windows, and a remodel of the Robertsville side are highlights of the project. We hope that the uh, view of Robertsville is going to be a, a vast improvement for uh, the 
folks wanting to move into town and see a school that looks as new as it feels inside. So we've, we're very proud of what's happening there. Uh, we did get a report from ESG a few weeks ago and our energy savings are on target and, and we are where we need to be as far as paying for these upgrades. And the last piece of renovation that's left, on the left side you can see what it's gonna look like, on the right side you can see that they're getting ready to pour concrete to start work on that to improve the uh, Illinois Avenue side of the building. Okay, that was a, a lot of information in a short amount of time, and then we'll just talk about next steps. Uh, as the board knows, uh, next Monday at 5.30, we have the line-by-line -line review, and then on the 18th, Wednesday, we'll have the public hearing and first reading, and then on May 23rd, along with our regular board meeting, we'll have the second reading uh, of the budget at that time. So I and my staff are here for any questions you might have on what you've seen tonight. Questions from anyone at this time? Uh, let me say, uh, Ms. Van Dyke, again, thank you and your staff for uh, keeping us on schedule uh, and having this information to us in a very timely manner so we could begin uh, reviewing the budget and looking at it. Uh, and that's much appreciated, so thank you for that, and please pass that on to your, your staff if you would do that. I, I guess just a quick question, uh, and we, we were talking about this earlier, uh, and it is always an unknown. Uh, the exact science of how we calculate it is almost like being a weather person. You just don't know until you see it, but uh, the number of new students and or the number of students that we uh, may lose in that uh, classification. Do we feel pretty good about where we are at this point in time? At, at as this, good as we can I was going to say, at this point, we, we do, yeah. The, the big unknown is if we're going to see the number of students leave us that, that left us last year. Um, if, if that starts to stop happening, uh, we'll start to, to have some capacity issues very quickly. Um, so so uh, it, it, our projections, we don't have a model to project that. Uh, so, so next, next uh, end of July, August will, will be an interesting time for us to see just how many students have left us. But Mr. Lay, you have anything else to add to that? I would just, <clears throat> excuse me, I would just add in that one slide, you noted that we have two additional staff being hired at Linden uh, currently. And normally we have two teaching positions in contingency. This year we have three. So we already feel somewhat confident that one of the contingency, an additional contingency position will need to go to Linden based on what we're seeing. There's a good possibility that the second would need to go to Willowbrook based on what we are seeing with current enrollment. Uh, and then that leaves us one position should we continue to see growth in other places. So, so I, I think that we probably have done as well as we can do with the information we have when you consider the unknowns. And, you know, it's like, and, and like Dr. Borcher said, really the, the key here is, you know, one would assume we pro possibly experienced more growth last year than we will this fall, but if we had not had the number of students leaving the district uh, that were coming, I mean, we would, we would be in a different, different place. This year would have looked different as far as staffing, but, but I think we feel good, for, you know, given the information we have. So. And I'll just add, and the board knows this, but uh, the new software tool that we have, we can track where every family is in our community. We know how many students are coming out of wh what developments. Uh, an example is the AMSI apartments. We have three students uh, that have currently come out of, of there. So we're not seeing the number of students generated out of that complex like we may have seen in other places. But we're going to continue to monitor that so as we see more growth, more apartments go up, more condos go up, we can apply a value to that knowing how many kids we're getting out of those various neighborhoods. But we'll just continue to watch that the best we can. Ms. McLean. So we're adding two teachers at Linden. So that's two new classrooms? Two new classrooms and then we'll have three. Normally we have one or two in contingency. We've put three teacher contingency spots in this year just not knowing the growth that we might see out of the preserve area. Right, so um, 
space wise how how are we doing <laughs> we just did a we had a meeting an enrollment meeting just last week and uh, mr lay went out and talked to dr ward out at linden uh, we're looking at rooms and and to make sure we have enough for uh, that expected growth and right now unless like i said unless all of a sudden we stop losing students uh, we, we feel pretty good for next year, but, but again, that audit took place just last week. Again, uh, no, that's not the first time we've done it. Thank you. Anyone else? Alan, while you're here, just a quick question. Are we on schedule with the track? Yes, we are. Uh, we did have a little bit of rain delay early on, so we're looking to be mid-June, late June for the paving to go down and then uh, early July they should be wrapping up the final details so the board will challenge City Council to a race with that <laughs> no I guess not <laughs> a walking race it would be of course we'll look forward to that okay uh, you see the schedule in front of you we'll be back here again on the 16th at 5 30 that's our work session where we will review uh, the expenditure side of the budget line by line uh, if you have questions between now and then uh, if you want to go ahead and submit those questions to dr borchers uh, prior to that meeting that would be good uh, but we'll go over that, and again, any questions that you might have at that time, we'll try to get those answered. And then on the 18th is the public hearing with first reading, and on May 23rd is our regular BOE meeting uh, where we'll have the second reading and adoption of the budget. That will be a full packed meeting uh, on that night as well. And then you can see the rest of the schedule in front of you. All right. If there are no other questions, thank each of you for being here. Thank you all. We stand adjourned.